Hi there, Lindsay here. Today we're gonna do a cute little illustration of a um, of a dessert. It looks kind of like a chocolate pudding, and I'm working on this little Stillman and Burn. Uh, it's my travel sketchbook, actually. Um, I really love this small size, and I just wanted something fun and easy to do. I'm gonna use the Lucas watercolors from our sponsor, Jerry'sArtorama.com. I'll have everything linked below. I've got the 48 set here, but you don't need that many colors. I just have it out because it's convenient. I'm actually due to refill a few of those pan so kind of have it out here to remind me that I need to do that. Alright, I'm going to start off with a color erase pencil and the reason I enjoy these is that they are um, erasable so if it turns out that I, I mess a line up I, I can basically draw with a lot of confidence because I know that if something is wrong I can erase it. I'm actually going to scooch that just out of the way a little bit because I, I like to be able to move my um, my sketchbook around as I'm working and I also like to be able to turn it upside down when I'm doing something like a cup or a vase or anything where I need the edges to be symmetrical, a portrait, anything like that. I'll link to the reference photo I'm using down below. Now this little cup has a little bit of a lip on it. Man, this looks so good. The, whatever this dessert is, it looks like a, a pudding. I had this pudding once at this restaurant in Bath, Maine. Oh my gosh, it was so good. It was like a vegan mousse and it was just the most rich amazing dessert. So uh, went there on Mother's Day. It was so good. Okay, I'm going to put a little cherry on top here. I'm going to start off with a little indent and then put the draw the round part of the cherry. The color I'm using, by the way, is terracotta. And uh, I'm going to put a little whipped cream up here. I don't know if I'll end up erasing too much of this actually. You can see some of that on the inside of the jar. Now we're going to have some drips going over the edge of this kind of like a lighter like chocolate sauce or something. This would also be really fun to do in markers. I just uh, re-swatched all my Copic markers because I'd lost my Copic swatch a while ago. I don't know what happened to it, but I couldn't find it. And so I'm like, well, it's time for me to re-swatch anyway. And <clears throat> I've recently reordered some re-inkers and I wanted to see like what shape the rest of my markers were. And they're all in pretty good shape, but I also like to be able to cross-reference my disposable markers to see if any of the colors match because then sometimes I can re-ink them if their nibs are still good. And I like to do that. I don't like to... Uh, I'm going to throw away. And if I have like a duplicate, if I realize, that, oh, that's exactly like this other marker and I've got a friend that's just getting into markers, I can give them the uh, the duplicates of, you know, a disposable brand. I'm not going to put the little sprinkles in there because I don't really need to do that. I do want to throw a, uh, I think I'll put like another cherry here. And maybe do one lying down on its side over here. Just to kind of balance it out so I have three kind of uh, things there. Okay, I've got my water bucket up here. I'm going to grab a round brush. This is a number 12 round Mimic Faux Squirrel Brush. You could use something smaller. Um, I do like to go in with a big brush. I'm not going to erase anything. Um, you could though, but I really don't think I need to. Well, maybe I'll erase this little bar part right in here. Do your erasing before you add water though. Don't be like me and decide you're going to do that after the fact because then you could end up marring the paper. I'm going to start off with a really pale wash of brown on the little, uh, the little pot itself except that little area where I can see the white cream in there. And I'll go right up where that drizzle is. So this is going to be my lightest color. This paper is um, the Stillman & Bird Mixed Media Beta Series, so it's a little bit smoother. It's almost like a hot press paper. Okay, I'm going to go with a really, really pale Colors. So I always like to swatch my watercolors because sometimes it can be quite deceiving in the pan. 
Um, I think I'll use a little bit of raw umber for this this layer here because it's very it's a little cooler in color, and um, this is gonna have a lot of the reflections. I add a little actually add a little bit of the whatever red I'm gonna use for the cherries. I think I'll probably use um, permanent alizarin crimson. That is right here. I feel like I just want to warm that up just a little bit. And I'm going to give that a wash everywhere. A permanent alizarin crimson is nice because you get that nice cool red, but you don't have um, you don't have the fading properties. So that's one instance where having the tried and true, I shouldn't say tried and true, but the traditional color is not good because it's going to fade on you. Or alizarin crimson hue, that would mean it was not the original alizarin crimson that's prone to fading. So I'd highly recommend that if you are looking for paint. I'm going to let that dry. While that's drying, I am going to grab um, grab a smaller brush. I'll go with a number, well, I'll go with a number four. I've been using these a lot for the last few years. I probably could use to replace the number four round because it is getting a little, uh, getting a little worn down. Uh... But the other brushes have held up really well. I'm going to do a light wash on the two cherries that are not touching the um, the wet area so that I don't end up with any issues, any bleeding that I don't want. And if you have any puddles, just blot your brush on a paper towel or a rag and then you can just lift you can just set your brush in it and lift it up. Um, let's see, I'm going to want a little bit of a grayed down color. I know I'm going to want another brown in there too. Let me go with, let's see, a burnt umber, because that's a raw umber. Let me grab a burnt umber, that's a little bit browner. And I'm going to want some sort of blue in there. I think I will go with ultramarine, it's my tried and true. My tried and true blue, I know that's going to mix good with my red. And I am going to make just a little bit of a gray. You can mix it in with that too. Really, really watery. I'm going to be using this on some of the cream areas. And I think I'll use some of that down here as a shadow as well. Adding my shadow off to the left. I have a heater running real close by, you can probably hear it. Uh, so my paper is gonna dry real quick, which is handy for this piece anyway. Okay, now I'm going to go back and grab a little more burnt umber, add it to the color that I mixed originally for that um, that cream and uh, or the uh, the pudding, whatever that is. And I'm going to start adding the um, adding some of the non highlighted parts. So we got some glare. I think it's like a reflected, like the uh, lights bouncing off the table reflecting onto the jar there. I'm just, um, I'm kind of doing wet on dry, not really a controlled wash because I haven't started with a bead of color. It's not a real big area. I'm just trying to get it laid down so it's not streaky. And then we got a little bit of the dark down here.
Just try to go quickly so you don't end up with a with a streak. Okay, now I'm going to need a type of yellow, and um, let's see. I don't want just a regular yellow ochre. I want something a little bit warmer than that. I think I'm going to do gold ochre here. Gonna mix that with some burnt umber. Oh, it's got a richer yellowy brown. That's gonna go. That's gonna go here. We've got this other. It's almost look. Maybe it's like a chocolate peanut butter dessert. Oh, doesn't that sound good? I am hungry. Can you tell? <laughs> Add some of this in the uh, drips coming down over the edge. It must be like a peanut butter sauce, I think. Throw a little bit more of the yellow. I'm filming this on Christmas Eve. I think I might actually upload it today um, because I don't know how many people would be around on Christmas Day to watch. Well, I mean, people can watch whenever they want, but um, I might upload it early just so that you know, if people have a quiet Christmas Eve, they have something to, to paint if they want to. Oh, I think I'll let that kind of pull down right onto the ground, too. Okay, I can also put a layer of red on that cherry. There. I'm gonna try to make a green with the two with the blue and it's gonna make a pretty dull green, but it might be green enough because the cherry stems really aren't that bright green. So I'm gonna use the this is the color I used. Uh, oh no, that's not anywhere near. Look at that, it makes a great gray though. Oh, that's a nice, really nice gray. I like that gray, but that's not what I need. I need that has absolutely no green in it. Uh, so let's see, I think I'll just grab some sap green. I didn't pre-spray my palette. These colors uh, re-wet really well. Even though I haven't used these, this palette in quite a long time. Let's grab a small brush here. brown on the top where the stem was connected to the tree. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and put some sprinkles up there in the cream because the, it, there's really not a lot of, um, really not a lot of shadow or anything up there so grab the other brown get those get a little bit of um, dimension because it's kind of like chocolate chunks and this thing is looking better and better by the minute like something I want to eat I mean like I want a little bit more dark. All right. 
Now I'm going to take some of that red. Going to make some of that ultramarine in there. Try not to get too much water because I don't want to lighten it up. And we'll put in the shadows on the cherry. I love working on the sketchbook because it really takes a lot of the um, the pressure off something being perfect. You can have fun with it. Oopsie. <laughs> yeah, like you can just paint right on to the background, not worry about it. <laughs> now I'm going to grab some just red on its own, but a stronger consistency. just having fun with this. I'm not gonna fuss about details. You can always go back in with um, colored pencils if you want to or gel pens. That's totally up to you. Try to get as much work as I can done with a paint. I like to get this nice crisp red just kind of on its own because it just makes it nice and vivid. While the cherries are drying, we're going to go in with a little bit more on the um, on the pudding here. I'm going to go in with a darker mix of burnt umber and raw umber. And I'm noticing in actually one of the other, because there's like three different puddings on there. I'm seeing some like a layer of like nuts or something in one of them. So I'm kind of thinking I might want to do that. Let's see. I want to have a little bit of a shadow in or just kind of division line between the cream with the topping or whatever and the, uh, the stuff underneath. I think, I think I might add that layer of chocolate or nuts or whatever that is in there. I like that. I think it looks interesting. Can always go oh shoot. Can always go back in and add um uh add a highlight after I'm gonna kinda go over this highlight area. And I'll have to clean up the edge with a paint pen or something because I've kind of botched that. I'm going to start cooking for Christmas Eve myself in a minute. Make some rolls and throw a frozen pie in the oven because. I'm not much of a chef, but I do, I enjoy making bread, bread's fine, but as far as like sweets or anything, Rue Calendars makes a vegan pie that is just fine. And for some insane reason, I always have my yearly physical, like right after Christmas, like day, a couple days after Christmas. And so, like, I don't want to overindulge during the holidays because I have to be weighed. <laughs> it's very unpleasant. But you'll be much better this year than last year, though. <laughs> okay. A little shadow on the edge of that drip.
I'll grab some of the yellow on its own. That is like the perfect peanut butter yellow, isn't it? It, just, it really looks like peanut butter. That's what it is. In my imagination, this is a peanut butter parfait. Peanut butter chocolate parfait. Gotta make sure there's a little bit of a difference between what's on the outside of the thing and what's on the inside. What's dripping out from the outside and what's on the inside of the... I'm gonna have to do that with gel pens, though. Which is fine, because I'm working on a sketchbook. I'm not gonna worry about it. And... Let's see. Want a little bit more color in that chocolate. A little bigger brush, actually, that's not big enough to do what I want to do. I'll go over that highlight. I'm not happy with that. Uh, with that very much. There we go. I think I'll grab that gray that we made on accident and use that in the in the cream area because it's really not it's not standing out enough gonna make a high uh, shadow for the cherry stem Okay, and um, I think I'm going to just go in and start going in with some colored pencil or gel pen and kind of sharpen things up a little bit. Um, let's see. I think I'll let this dry and then we'll come back and add our finishing touches with pencil or pen. All right, the paper is dry and I'm just going to go in and add a few just highlights. Um, nothing too major just um i like to start off with the highlights because i feel like i kind of lost a lot of that I'm using prismacolor pencils you can use whatever you have available i like to go in with my um with my brightest first just because it helps me uh determine where other things need to go. It can help get the shape of everything forming as well. Okay, uh, oh, I didn't grab a gray, but I do want a little bit of a gray because you can also see on the inside of the jar there, and, I, and that cream is on the inside. I want that to be delineated a little bit, and I also want to get the, the edge a little bit here. I can also shade a little bit on the jar itself with this and help break apart the drips from what's inside the jar. So I'm just kind of using this blunt gray just very, very lightly and scumbling on a little bit of shadow. Okay. 
grab some of this pretty brown. I thought this would go really nice. To accent the, um, that kind of sauce stuff. And just warm that part up a little bit because it is a little bit yellower and warmer than the other chocolate. I'm going to take some red. This is a uh, Tuscan red. And just add some real deep shadows on the cherries. Help them get that glossier look. Put a little bit in the stems to give them shadow and definition. And if your shadows are too purple, this will help make them look more like that cherry purple color. Oh, we can use a little bit of that gray in the cream too, just to give it a little definition. Uh, I'm going to grab some bright red and also add that to the cherries. This is Crimson Lake. And then I can add some nice bright white highlights on the cherries. Make them look nice and shiny and glossy because it will grab reflections all over the place. And really, that's about all I want to do for this sketch. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you have a Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. And if not, I just hope you enjoy your day. It's so fun to take a little break from the hectic preparations and just create a little bit of art, I think, anyway. Doesn't have to be a big deal. If you're not feeling inspired, you can just doodle. You can just swatch some supplies. Um, we all have moments like that where we're just kind of... A lot of times it's, it's also when we're really busy and we're like, ah, I just want to take a little break, but you know, you might feel a little like you should be doing everything. You should be cleaning. You should be washing the dishes. You should be baking, you know, and it's, and you just want to take a little time out. Um, don't put a lot of pressure on yourself. Draw whatever you see. Just, you know, get it, get it down on paper. That's going to make a huge difference to your well-being. And then when you go to, oh, I want to put a little highlight. They're just kind of going down through everything here. Um, so then when you are, you know, focusing on the task at hand, you're going to be more efficient because you're not going to feel so stressed out, I don't think. You'll, you'll be able to enjoy it more. A little bit of glare on this glass. I think that's what it needs. There we go. And that's what I think anyway. Hope you enjoyed this. This was fun for me. It almost reminds me of Santa Claus, like a belt and a, uh, and a fluffy hat with a pom-pom. <laughs> Does it kind of look Christmassy to you? I think so. I hope you enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this. Check out our sponsor, jerrysautorama.com. You can find the Lucas watercolors I used. You can find the Prismacolor pencils I used. You can find the Creative Mark Mimic brushes that I used. And I think they carry these little sketchbooks. They, if they don't have the still and burn, they do have some comparable ones. And I will link those up as well. Thanks again for watching. Until next time, happy painting!